Hello friends and greetings for today. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we shall be looking forward to get into the chapter five of set C and uh, we have few questions again, very interesting and very different from that of the previous. So let's quickly start and get understanding of the same. The very next question we have is question number 30 and it says which of the following is not a purpose of the test plan. And uh, as usual, we should start recalling what the purpose of test plan is, which is very, very straightforward defined in the syllabus. Uh, we must be clear with the pointers, the objective, the determination of documentation, the selection of tools, etc., uh, the resources, what kind of entry criteria, exit criteria, etc. we need, and uh, also determining the budget, schedule, timeline. Uh, we do talk about all these factors as a part of determination of the test plan and certainly uh, are included. But the question is very keenly important related to what is not a part of the test plan. So let's look at the option. Option A says uh, to define test data and expected result for the component test and component integration test. I think, uh, again, if you remember some of the collaboration from the chapter two, we did tell you that uh, uh, the determination of test design uh, is the you know phase where you write the test cases and test data. And at the same time, this is not something which happens as a part of the test planning because test planning happens much earlier in the life cycle. Whereas when it comes to the development respective phase, like uh, if it is for component testing, it's more of a like low level design. Uh, that is where you will get started with test analysis and design for component testing and component integration testing. That is unit and integration. So that's pretty much where you will get started with determining the required data and the expected result, which is test design phase. So test plan is a de dedicated different phase than that of test design and test implementation and should remind you that this is not something which we include. But anyways, let's cross check with BCD. B says uh, to define the exit criteria from the component test level that 100% statement coverage and 100% branch coverage must be achieved. Entry and exit criteria are part of the test plan. But of course, the test plan can be for the overall test life cycle and can be for a particular level as well. So determining exit criteria or entry criteria for unit testing is not a problem as a part of test plan. Because of course, planning happens for the entire life cycle where we can do level test plan as well. And when we do level test plan, we can talk about schedule, timeline, resources, tools, etc., including entry and exit criteria for that. So yes, this is one of the inclusive item as a part of the test plan. If I go to option C, option C says uh, to describe what fields uh, the test progress report shall contain and what should be the form of this report. Uh, certainly true because uh, these are the things what you really need to define right in the beginning because one of the element as a part of the test plan is to determine the number of documentation, the type of it, the details of it and the template for it. So that goes right in the test plan and option D says uh, to explain why system integration testing will be executed, excluded from testing, although the test strategy requires this level. Whatsoever. If in case you have decided to exclude a particular level, yes, you determine them as a part of the test plan. That why are you de deviating? So if you remember, uh, not so much, maybe not sure, but for me, it's very simple. Uh, it's the third point, which clearly says in the test plan, the very, very first topic, uh, the very first slide, it says that, uh, that, you know, if in case you are deviating from your strategy in the test plan, then it is very important for you to define that what is the reason you are deviating from the test strategy when you're defining the test plan. So yes, if you're excluding something, it is very important to be included in the report or sorry, in the test plan. So I think that makes it very simple and clear that uh, what is the right answer. So the right answer for this particular question is A, that is to define test data and expected uh, results for component test and component integration test are not supposed to be included as a part of the test plan because they happen as a part of the test design and implementation respectively. So that's how sometimes we can make it very simple, but the only reason, uh, only thing what you need is the knowledge. If you have the knowledge, you remember what you have, been, what you have read as a part of the syllabus, you know exactly what you need to answer. 
Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is 31. And this question is a little interesting one as we are talking about the test estimations. And uh, yeah, we need to do everything on the slide here. So let's start reading the question. It says, at the beginning of each iteration, the team estimates the amount of work in person days uh, they will need to complete during the iteration. Let E uh, in brackets N be the estimated amount of work for iteration N. That means it's simple N representing uh, the number of iteration, that is amount of work for an iteration uh, in terms of like the count of it. And let A uh, in brackets N be the actual amount of work. So E represents estimated, A represents actual, N represents the number of iteration, okay, which iteration is going on. So half of the information has been provided to you in the statements here. Let's continue further. It says uh, uh, of the work done in the iteration and from the third iteration, the team uses the following estimation model based on extrapolation. So uh, before we look at that formula, I want to let you know that, hey, however, this thing is not included in syllabus because uh, uh, as a part of the discussion, as a part of our tutorial, we did not tell you this formula at all. So that's the reason the formula will be provided to you in the examination. So it's not something which we have missed. It's just that the uh, examination will take care of it. If they did not cover it, they will specify the formula. But if they have covered the formula, they will not specify it. Okay, so for example, three point estimation, they have given you the formula of estimates and the uh, tolerance. So standard deviation. So they will not give you the formula for that. But for this, they have not given the formula in the syllabus, so they will give you in the examination. So you don't have to worry about it. And formula is pretty simple here. Uh, it's like E of N, that is uh, estimated uh, for a particular iteration, is equal to three times A N minus one plus A N minus two and divided by four. So it's a very simple, easy formula to calculate. The graph shows the estimated and actual amount of work for the first four iterations. So we can see the graph on the right hand side. It's clearly uh, representing the count of it. Uh, in person days, like for first iteration, uh, we have estimated as eight and uh, the actual as seven. Now, how did I do that? Of course, uh, I'll tell you in a moment. The graph shows the estimated and actual amount of work for the first four iteration. And uh, what is the estimated uh, amount of work for iteration five? Now, how did I determine that black one is estimated and the gray is actual? Of course, it is written below the graph. They will represent it as a part of the graph that what the color represent. So in order to solve this question, all we have to do is get all the values, okay, and put it in the uh, formula and then try to understand. But before that, uh, recall what exactly extrapolation is. An extrapolation is a which is a test technique for uh, estimations, or I would say estimation technique rather, which is used in the agile development models to do the estimation based on the completed sprints. This is more of like if we don't have something as a predefined uh, reference to use to determine how much work to be done. So as we start the project, we start working on it, we use our completed uh, sprints, estimated versus actual data to determine what could be the amount of work to be done for the uh, sprint five. Okay, so that's what we look forward to. And the reason it's being divided by four is because we are we completed four iterations so far. So we, whatever number of iterations you take, is just being divided by that. Anyway, so let's look at this further. So from the graph we have, uh, so this is the simple uh, feeding in to make your job easier. So from the graph, we can get the value of uh, if iteration four is equal to six. So if you go to iteration number four, uh, the actual value for that is six. So there are grid lines to take you to the uh, Y axis. And A of three, that is uh, the third iteration is eight that is from the last two gray boxes. Now, if I go and put this formula in the, uh, you know, other formula, E of five, that is estimation of estimated uh, person days of fifth iteration is equal to three times A of four plus A of three because N minus one, right? So currently we are taking the fourth uh, iteration data to uh, pick up the next. So that's divided by four and uh, uh, Sorry, n is equal to 5, right? So we are taking the next iteration. So n is equal to 5 here. So e of 5 is equal to 3 multiplied by a4, which means 5 minus 1. So fifth iteration minus 1. So a of 4, then a of 3, which is n minus 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3 divided by 4, which we, if we further complete this, we get uh, a into uh, 6 plus 8, okay? And then 
A is of course uh, the actual number of hours. That's what we have from there. And that will come to total of uh, 26 divided by four, which finally on division would result into 6.5 percentage. So I think uh, I would like to give importance to the calculation part here because the formula will be defined to you. The values would be important to derive and uh, we just have to feed in and do this basic calculation which could result into the right uh, estimate because they know where exactly you can go wrong and if you go slightly wrong here and there the wrong option will also be listed so it's very easy to go wrong uh, in the uh, calculations so please be patient take your time and get to the right answer okay so given that we just got the calculations done the right answer for this particular question is c that is 6.5 percent days will be the estimated amount of work for the upcoming iteration number five so that's how we basically deal with doing this basic calculations let's move on to the next one the next question we have is the test execution schedule and we the question number is 32 again it's a little tricky one instead of a table they have given you a picture but nothing to worry uh, the explanation will be provided to you that how do you read the diagram uh, the question says you are preparing a test execution schedule for executing seven test cases that is tc1 to tc7 and uh, the following figure includes the priorities of these test cases uh, one is representing high priority and three represents the lowest the figure also shows the dependencies between the test cases using arrows for instance the arrow from the tc4 to tc5 means tc5 can only be executed if tc4 was previously executed so that pretty much makes sense because everywhere you see the arrow like TC1 and TC2, that means in order to run TC2, I need to run TC1 first. Okay, that's how you read the dependencies. And finally, the question is again a little tricky one. It says which test case should be executed sixth? Okay, because they're not asking first, second, third, it's going to sixth. So there must be something happening in between and the order would uh, be completely dependent on these dependencies and the priorities. So always remember the basic rule says we run the high independent first, then high dependence, then medium independent, then medium dependence, then low independent, and then low dependent. So if you have a high independent test, you would run that first. Then you would remove the dependencies of any other high test. So in this case, if you look at the diagram, I see the priority one is with TC7 and TC5, but both of them are dependent on TC4 whereas TC5 is also dependent on TC2. So that means I have to run the other test cases. There are no high priority tests which are independent. So let's get started with uh, uh, understanding the complete flow. So in order to run the first priority test, uh, we will have to run the TC4 uh, and then TC2 as well. Uh, and TC6, which is also going to be the lowest part, okay, because, uh, sorry, we need to run the TC1 because TC2 is further blocked by uh, TC1 so we cannot do that so finally at this point of time if you can see the sequence uh, in order to run the priority one test cases as early as possible the first five test cases should be uh, we will have TC4 then TC7 which because uh, it can be executed freely after that but uh, because by running just one test that is TC4 TC7 is getting independent so I don't have to go with the top one that is like run the TC1, then TC2, then TC5, because that takes three executions to complete a high priority test. Whereas the lower one takes only one test to get the high test executed. So always give priority to something which is limited, okay, minimum. So right here, uh, I would start with that approach. So TC4, TC7, then TC1, then TC2, and TC5. So these are my first five test cases. That is four, seven, one, two, five. So I've completed five test executions here, or like the ordering of that. Now I'm left with two more. That is of course the TC6, and uh, I do have the one remaining, which is uh, TC3, uh, as it is independent. Okay, so next we need to run uh, TC3, uh, because uh, it has a higher priority than TC6, because TC6 is priority three, whereas TC3 is two. See, again, this is something very easier to skip the reason is we may think we'll let's go in the flow okay so after executing tc5 we would go with tc6 saying that this is the flow so this is how they trap you this is how they trap you in the examination so don't get influenced by this always try to understand that you are keeping everything into account before you conclude on any of the 
solutions. So yes, we would prefer to run TC3 first because the priority is two, then I would go with TC3. However, the dependency has been already removed. So both of these two tests becomes independent. So finally, in the order, it will be three, then it will go to seven. So overall full schedule would be TC4, TC7, TC1, TC2, TC5, then TC3 and TC6. So the question once again, what which test case should be executed sixth and the right answer for this particular question is a that is tc3 okay tc3 will be the sixth position test case so please be careful with reading these keywords because we sometimes even go wrong with and the best part is we don't even remember that we did not read it correctly okay so and what you don't read you never remember that so you would never understand why you went wrong and how did you fail given that you have the knowledge so lack of attention could be another big reason for the failures so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning